Welcome back to the kitchen and today we're cooking, we're whipping and we're going to make ourselves some vegan lasagna and I cannot remember for the life of me the last time I had a lasagna. I think it was probably almost a year ago now so I'm really looking forward to this and I was looking, I was shopping right, I was shopping, I was looking around and I thought man what could I do? What could I do for you guys? Something different, you know? Something different. And I came across this. Because I've been seeing a few people on Instagram, you know, tagging this up. And I never knew. But if you look at the back here, it's vegan. Right? The season in here is vegan. So I thought, ooh, I could make bolognese, but I don't want to make bolognese. I want to make lasagna. So I thought this would be a good base for it, right? So what I decided to do is I've got this and this. I've got some mushrooms, some spring onions, some lentils, some carrots, and some zucchini. And I'm gonna put all of them together. I'm gonna to add, I'm gonna follow the instructions here. Some onions, well, spring onions, I've used the spring onions. Chopped tomatoes, some tomato puree, Mince meat, I don't have that obviously, so I'm gonna use mushrooms instead and lentils. I'm gonna mix it all up. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm doing everything, step by step, almost, right? Because I've got most of my ingredients ready already. And you have to watch out, right? Because I didn't know this. Um, I'm quite new to being vegan, okay? I don't know about you guys, but I'm quite new to the whole thing. And some pastas actually have egg in it. Um, and I wasn't really aware to say but luckily, I accidentally bought the right lasagna sheet without knowing, right? So it was the, the biggest luck, because I was about to think, I was thinking like, man, I wanted to do this, but it's probably gonna have milk in it. But it doesn't, it's made of uh, durian wheat, which is really cool. It's this one here. And if you check the back, it's just durian wheat. There's no, there's nothing else in there, which is amazing. That means I can actually do this for you guys. But I gotta say, this cook takes forever to cook, like forever. And I was down at TK Maxx, right? And I thought, okay, I need to get a lasagna dish now. And when I picked this up, it looks huge. When I picked this up, I didn't think much of it. I thought, oh, this is a good size. Like it's not too small, it's not too big. But now looking at it, this is absolutely mammoth. Like this is absolutely huge. And I don't know if I'll have enough for it. So by the way, this is my first time doing it. I don't know if I have enough for it, but let's give it a try, right? It's the only way, it's the only way we can do it. Um, I know it's gonna taste good. I feel that confident in myself that I know it's gonna taste good. I'm just worried about the size of this. I think I've done enough lasagna sheets. I hope so anyway. So let's get, get closer, get closer. Come on, come on, come on. Don't be shy, come on, don't be shy. I'm gonna put this down. Like I said, mushrooms, zucchini, uh, carrots, and some spring onions. I dried roasted them all, so I, I, I cooked it in a pan without any oil. Because uh, the, the mushrooms itself, they got so much water in them, right? When they stop cooking, all that water is released. So pretty much that mushroom water I used to cook the zucchini, the, the mushroom itself, and the spring onions. The only thing I had to cook separately was the carrots, because the carrots, they take forever to cook. So I had to put them in water. But I use that same water to cook the lasagna sheet, okay? So what we're going to do now, we're going to just... Oh, let me move this out of the way. I also got some olives here, because I thought, you know, I'm going to need to take up all that space in here. So I'm going to need to use everything I can. So I'm going to add some olives as well. I like olives. I don't have any normal olives. I've got the smoky chipotle olives. I'm going to try one now, actually. Not bad. Gonna add a nice punch to it, and I also got some seasoning here garlic and onion. Why not? And I got this vegan white sauce. And I'm perhaps gonna do a review on this as well because I never had it before, so it's all this is new to me, right? So let's go. I'll leave that there. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fold the cooking instructions on here. So, either Add the, add the ingredients, then mix it in with some water. Come here, oh, this is easy stuff. 
Easy stuff, can't go wrong. But I'm gonna show you guys how I'm doing it, right? So that you got an idea. So, that's in there. Where's my tomatoes? Here's some chopped tomatoes. Just gonna add that in. Keep in mind, all this is cooked already, so I just gotta really do the. Um... Alright, I'm gonna add this in. Boom, oh, that doesn't seem like enough. I'm gonna add some water in here. Because if you add water in here, right, instead of a cup, there's still some residue left from the tomato sauces, so you can just use that straight in there. So it's like tomato water in a way. And I just give it a good mix. Add that in. Look at that. Easy. Then we're going to add this in there as well. Ooh, it smells potent. It's red as well. It's, it's interesting. Okay, we're going to use the whole sachet. All right, and I've got my little trusted wooden spoon. Gonna mix it all together. Now, some lentils. All right, just uh, half a can. Yeah, that should be enough. The, the, the good thing is, yeah, when you use lentils, is that they actually melt with the sauce you're cooking with. So they sort of like just become one with the with the tomato sauce. So really, I was never a big fan of lentils. I always thought they were disgusting. But that's because I never really knew how to cook them. Now that I know how to cook them, I'm like, okay. Now now we're getting somewhere. Now I can eat it. You know, before I couldn't, I was like, what the hell am I doing here? Okay, so... Leave the heat on low because you want to just nicely cook for a little bit. But now I'll just add the onions, the garlic, you know, give it that flavour. That flavour. Okay, there we are. And then some black pepper. I love black pepper. I don't think black pepper makes the food spicy, I just think black pepper adds extra flavours. And that's what I need. And my food, so mix that up again. Just make sure it's nice and tasty. Right. Now I might add a bit more water and some tomato puree, because it does say add tomato puree in there. So just excuse me for a second. I've been talking with you. You gotta think all of this water is gonna evaporate, right? It will, believe it or not. And what's gonna happen? The only thing that's gonna be left is tomato juice. So you might as well add the water in, let it all cook together. <coughs> what? Excuse me? <coughs> ah. Alright, we're good. We good. Okay. Now, whilst that's cooking, I'm going to turn it down. I've got to show you guys something important, right? Because it's not the first time I cooked lasagna. I cooked lasagna before, but it was a meat lasagna. Um, and the issue I had with it was, I used to put the the sheets, the lasagna sheets, right at the bottom, and it used to get stuck to you know, the, the actual dish itself. So it used to be quite hard to get off as well and it just done a big mess. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get some of this white sauce, I'm gonna put it at the bottom. All right, oh, this is thick. Look how thick that is. Okay, this is uh, slightly concerning because it's really thick. But that's, that might just be me because I'm not used to like Really thick white sauce. Like I said, it's been ages since I cooked lasagna, so I'm used to it being like smooth and creamy and everything else. But I'm gonna use the same spatula here. But all I'm gonna do is add it in there. If you can see that, I'm gonna mix it around. This is gonna be a base, right? Just uh. To the bottom of this. Here we are. 
Now I've got to mix this around as well just to make sure that it's not sure it's not burning. Alright, because if you if you keep your eye off it for too long, it will burn. You gotta keep moving it. And the heat is quite loud. Let's leave it lower just to make sure it's safe. Now it's time to add the lasagna sheets. Uh, I'm going to put them sideways because I think sideways will take up more space. I'll show you guys how I'm doing it. I don't think you can see that. I'll get close. Let me show you. There you go. See, that's the base. This is the base now. There's sauce at the bottom, so it won't stick. And there is obviously, I'm going to put the other sauce on top and everything else, so it'll be good. Now, let me just wash my hands for a second. You don't need to wash me, just wash the food cook. And I'm just going to add that in there as well. Just give me a second. I need to find a small knife, but I don't have a small knife, so I'm going to use a big knife. Okay, just chop that up. Just to add, oh, trust me, olives, they add a lot of flavor to the food. Like a lot. There's just something about olives, right? When you bite into it, like on a, um, a lasagna or a bolognese, and it, it just adds texture and just, it's a different like experience to your mouth, really. You know what I mean? That's the Italian way of doing it. I remember I went to Italy once. Well, I went to Italy and they had. And they had like a chicken lasagna, right? Which is not something that you would expect Italian people to do. But they had the chicken lasagna and it was really good. And one thing I didn't expect them to have was carrots in it. Because I never usually eat lasagna with carrots in it, but it turned out so nice. Like they had shredded chicken, carrots, a bit of olive in there. The best lasagna I ever had in my life. Like no doubt about it. It was in Rome as well. Obviously the main capital of Italia. Practically done to be honest. To be fair, you don't need to cook it too much because it's gonna go straight in the oven, it's gonna be cooking again. So you just want it to season itself. Make sure everything goes in there well. Now let's turn this off. Now we're gonna add it here, okay? Now this is the tricky part because it can get messy. So I'm just going to add little bits by bits. Now add the other sheet. Now same style as before. You can put it like that or like that. For me, it works better like that because it takes up more space. God, perfect. Now just top it off. Just like so. Go ham. It's all right. Don't be shy. Go ham. I was really stingy for the bottom bit because I wasn't sure by the top bit. I know that I won't have enough for a third one. So. Ooh. Don't worry, I'm just burning something. Now this is this is where it depends how much white sauce you have. If or cheese. You can add the layer of cheese, then you can add the, the other sheet of lasagna, then you can add the white sauce and the cheese again, right? Personally, I'm gonna keep it like that. I'm gonna add another sheet, white sauce, cheese. That's how I'm gonna do it. You guys can do it the way you wanna do it, but that's how I'm gonna do it. Now the magic's that time. Yeah, so look, still got some more in there. That's been hiding away from me. Well, this is where you finish it off with the cheese. The beautiful cheese. So I'm just using some uh, Veal Life. This one here. Ooh. So I'm just using some Veal Life, this one here, to, uh, to do it all. Oh, that's amazing, look at that. That's professional, look. That's professional. There you go. Now I'm going to pop that in the oven. And we're going to see what it looks like after. See so you in a bit. It's been about 20, 25 minutes. I just let the whole thing just, you know, combine its flavors all together. I made sure that the white sauce on top was turned a little bit brown so that I knew that it was fully light cooked. To be honest, all the ingredients itself are cooked, so there's not much more extra cooking you need to do, but you just need to let everything settle in into one piece. And that's what I've done. So if you check here, as you can see, it's going to a nice goldenish. Obviously, the edges got a little bit crispy, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a slice, 
I'm gonna show you guys what this side looks like. I'm gonna do a taste test. And it looks really good and it smells amazing. Uh, this is the tricky bit, right? Because I'm gonna have to go up and under. And I got my plate here. Oh, oh, oh! It's getting messy. But that's all right. It's gonna get messy. I oh, know that. Look at the steam coming off that. Mmm, it smells so good. It almost smells like pizza. Okay, now. I'm gonna cut a bit of it. It's a really awkward spot. Okay, just give me a second. Steam going all over my face. Now for the taste test. What you all been waiting for? Mmm. Oh, let's try. Mmm. Mmm. That's really nice. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that because I cooked it. You know, it is actually really good. Lentils, you can't taste them. The sauce itself is very nice and... um. Not overpowering, which is good. The main thing, me being picky, the main thing is the white sauce, right? Because the white sauce itself is uh, not very flavorsome. Like, it's not strong flavor of white sauce. It's meant to be like a creamy white sauce. You can't really taste it that much. I'll be honest, that's the only thing. But everything else all together goes in beautifully. Like this here took me about just over an hour to cook. But thinking about it, how long will that last me? Like I can eat this in probably like three days. So it's pretty good. There's a huge fly in my house. I've got to get rid of it as soon as the video ends. But thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're going to try it. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time.